Hello everybody! Back again with a new video, surprisingly, still doing this, I don't know why. Before starting this video, I want to thank everybody that subscribed. I almost have 1500 subscribers, which is unbelievable for me. And uh, thank you very much for subscribing. Now, this is my Bluetooth speaker, which I've built from scratch using some uh, speakers from an old TV. I've 3D printed this case and I've covered it in carbon fiber. If you can see, this is real carbon fiber. And these are real coins. And this, it's the microphone hole. Let me move the camera closer and show you in details what I've built here. I think it's pretty cool. You know what? Actually, first, I want to see how loud this thing gets. Magnets. Check out this action without even looking. And when you want to take it off, it just as easy. Anyway, let's see how loud it gets. Now it's paired with my phone. I will play some no copyright music and I will try to speak while increasing the volume. This was loud, 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 very loud. This is copyrighted. This is not. Play and pause. Next track from the beginning or previous track, and with this, you change the modes. For example, and this is auxiliary in. Let me show you all the features now. I will get the camera closer. By the way, check this out. This is a wireless charger. Ta-da! Charging wirelessly. Anyway, that's just a gimmick. Let me show you something real cool, which I love. You can print as many designs of these drills as you want. And you can just 
pop it like this, pop, and then pop. I've also made this design. You can actually put them here, these magnets are very strong, you know. But uh, don't do that, you know, just take the old one out, which is very easy. You pull it from the corner here, as you can see, I put out both of them, so you swap it back, and it's a very satisfying click. And now you have a new design. Which one do you like more? Do you like this one more, or do you like this one more? Like I said, these are actually coins which I glued here and you can hear a little click this is actually a relay and I will dismantle this later and I will show you what's inside this is a musical note I put this as a design element and not because it was a big hole inside from too much sanding of course not as you can see the screen is very visible when it's not on this is because here it's a layer of clear epoxy resin this one here, it's the remote control IR receiver this one and when you take the grills out you can just store them like this Fuck. they just pop very satisfyingly and very compact what this made this project possible it's this speakers. These are fully enclosed units and this helped a lot with the design because some audio engineer already designed them and it didn't matter how the shape of the speaker was inside because the drivers are already in their own enclosure which is optimized for these drivers. They also have this bass reflex passage. And now let's go on the back. Here we have an audio out so you can connect bigger speakers to this and make it a really powerful system here you have USB for audio a micro SD card slot so this can play audio files from the USB or the micro SD card and here is the auxiliary in this is the on and off button this is the radio antenna which to be honest I will uh, hardly use radio but hey, it's a nice gimmick and here it's a USB type C but the thing is this didn't arrive from China yet it's already three months and uh, I just was impatient and built the entire thing and I just made the hole for the USB type C which uh, hopefully it will arrive and this is a 12 volt input jack and this is a jack from a, a Lenovo laptop and the cool thing is that you can charge this speaker with all of these three jacks. You can charge from a Lenovo laptop, from a, a DC jack, and from USB Type-C. And it doesn't matter what voltage you use because inside of this there is a step-down and step-up converter with constant current and constant voltage limiting. So it doesn't matter what voltage you put here, it will always charge the battery at the same constant current and constant voltage rate. You can actually use all three of them at once if you want. Now I will show you how I actually built this uh, enclosure. I've designed it in uh, SolidWorks. It was uh, too big to, to print for my 3D printer. So I actually used mesh mixer and cut it. And then after I printed the individual parts, I glued them together and then I covered them in real carbon fiber. As you can see, it looks really nice. If we go in the sun, look at this. And check this out, the buttons that are inside, the touch control buttons, have actually LEDs and when I turn it on, they all glow red, you see? This is much pronounced at night, but you can easily find them in the dark. Besides the fact that they are very tactile, you know? You can easily find them. I like to use it via these touch buttons, which are amazing. This is like the best thing ever.
So this is not only a Bluetooth speaker, but it's also a Bluetooth conference phone. It's an FM radio as well. It can play songs from the micro SD card, from the USB stick, or from the auxiliary port. Also, you can use the USB stick or the SD card to record. Not to mention it has a wireless charger and touch buttons, a remote control, a color screen, and you can charge it with most common voltages. So after the case was uh, glued and covered in carbon fiber, I've cut these holes for the coins, and then I put around five layers of lacquer. So this is why we have this shine on it. The case, because it was made from PLA, got warped a bit in this area, but hey, I can live with that. So now let me open it up and show you what's inside. This is not sped up. I'm actually that fast. Ta-da! So what we have here is not very complicated. Here I have the insides of a wireless charger which I'm actually powering on with a micro USB cable. This in the middle are the cables for the microphone. I've uh, taped them because the connector was a bit wonky. But if you remove the tape you can disconnect it. By the way, you can find purchase links for uh, all the parts I used in the description of this video. And also in my pinned comment. Here on my left, your right, we have the cables coming from the touch buttons to a pack of four relays, which uh, easily disconnect so you can completely separate the top part. And also check this out, the front plate easily comes off with the driver's enclosures. They easily disconnect and uh, as well as the infrared receiver and the LCD screen. The screen and the infrared receiver are glued on this plate and check this out, the pins of the screen perfectly fit into this connector. They have exactly the same pitch. This board is what takes care of the battery charging. Like I said previously, this is a step up and step down, constant current and constant voltage board. This takes the voltages from any of the three input plugs and converts it into the 12.6 volts and 2 amps to charge the battery pack. Speaking of the battery pack, this is a 3S 2P battery pack with a BMS board included. This battery lasts around 42 hours at around 60% volume, which in my opinion is very acceptable. Check out my video on the 55 amp hour battery pack that I built to see how to build a battery pack. This small one is built similarly. From this battery pack, the voltage is amplified to 13 volts by this red board, which is a step-up boost converter, and it's fed to the amplifier board, which is this blue board. Also, the voltage from the battery board goes to another board, this one on the corner, which is a step-down converter this time, transforming the voltage of the battery into 5 volts for the Bluetooth receiver board, which is uh, this green board. This green board actually is the one that has all the inputs and outputs. And from this board I've actually soldered these cables to extend the screen to the front plate. And I did the same with the microphone and the buttons which go to these uh, JST plugs and then to the relays. Speaking of uh, buttons, here are the touch buttons that I've used and how everything looked before uh, it was mounted and covered in hot glue and tape. The circuit is very simple. The buttons from the board pull down to ground the signal in order to perform the action of clicking the button. So in my case, I've converted the ground to the common port of the 5V relay and the other cable from the button goes to the normally open pin of the relay. And the coil pins of the relay are one of them connected to the 5V and the other one connected to the output of the touch button. By the way, let me know if you want me to make another video explaining in more details and showing you how to connect a touch button with a relay. Looking at this front plate, you can see that it has magnets embedded in, but also you might be wondering why there is a space around the bass reflex port. Well, this is not a design error, but it's intentional and it's actually for cooling. The DC to DC converters and the amplifier get quite hot and uh, I didn't want them to be in a sealed enclosure and then to get hot and burned. Also, when charging this uh, Bluetooth speaker, I can see through the grill the LEDs of the charging board, so I can tell 
when the battery is charging and when it uh, finished charging. So initially I wanted to use this Bluetooth board uh, by itself and just connect it to the 12 volts wall power adapter and then to a step down voltage converter since the board needs 5 volts to work. I wanted to make a simple enclosure, no battery, no charging, but then I said, well, if it has Bluetooth and a remote control, then I need to make it portable. My first intention was to just simply power everything from a normal power bank since it's already providing 5 volts to the USB port. So I simply soldered the USB plug to the input of the board and uh, this worked very well. It was a simple circuit, easy to build, easy to charge, portable, except it had a crucial problem, was not too loud. So then I moved to this uh, circuit. So the 12 volts from the wall is boosted to 13 volts by this boost converter and powers on a 2 times 50 watts amplifier board but 50 watts is at an input voltage of 24 volts for 4 ohm drivers so at 13 volts for 6 ohm drivers is making less than that. This amplifier board is getting the audio signal from the auxiliary outline of the Bluetooth board and then it sends it to the four wires of the audio drivers. Also, from the same 12 volts input plug, the voltage is stepped down to 5 volts with this board and then it powers on the Bluetooth board. As you can see, the speakers used to connect here where the wires are cut, but now they connect on the back of the board to the line out. And as you saw, I've extended the screen, the infrared sensor and the microphone. Speaking of screen, initially I wanted to desolder it and then solder this plug to the board, but then I just cut the screen and soldered the extension wires directly and uh, this saved some space inside. And the buttons, I simply desoldered them and soldered a wire for each of them and only a single common ground wire for all of them. Anyway, enough talking, let's see what this thing can really do. It's all about humanity. Let's see how loud it gets.
no brain. Marvin Devine. Oh, and you can also record on a card if you hold this because of the microphone. Now it's recording directly to the card or you can record to the USB stick. Bye! Oh, and you can also record on a card if you hold this because of the microphone. Now it's recording directly to the car, or you can record to the USB stick. Bye! Nicole Belloubet et la nouvelle forte. Oh,